Will single window clearance for real estate projects become a reality soon? This has been the biggest demand of the industry. And signals from the new government give a lot of hope that this might finally happen. The president spoke about it in his joint parliamentary address. The Housing and Urban Development Ministry recognizes the urgent need to bring about this reform. And the one person who knows how this can be done is Dhanendra Kumar, Chairman Committee on Streamlining Approval Procedures for Real Estate Projects and former Chairman, Competition Commission of India. Welcome, sir. The committee headed by you recommended single window clearance for real estate in November 2012. But it just couldn't take off. We've had a change of government. Now there's a new government in place wanting single window clearances for not just real estate but all businesses. Do you think it can happen? Certainly. Is it feasible? It is absolutely feasible. And it has been done in many countries and the government is determined. My worry is that we are a federal structure. And housing is a state subject. There are central level clearances needed. How do you marry all of this? Absolutely. It can be done in an enmeshed IT platform. There are several clearances needed from the central government, which would include clearance in environment, clearance in defense, the heritage building, ASI, and so on. There are clearances needed from the state, the town country planning, the land, power, whatever else. All these can be done together, there could be a single composite application form. Once it is filed, copies can go to everywhere. Mm -hmm. And then whoever is concerned with it can process it. What we have recommended in this uh, report, that there should be a system of time-bound clearances. First of all, nobody knows at the moment what are all are the clearances needed, Absolutely. which are the forms. And many a times, you have to file in a consecutive manner. Once you obtain an approval, if it is delayed beyond a point, by that time the earlier approval is, is over and therefore you have to apply afresh. It's like a snake and ladder situation. Mm. So the total time involved and the delays and everything, they ultimately get multiplied. And in terms of money, means a lot. Means and lot. according to a report, McKinsey's... Would you agree that developers, when they claim that, you know, because of approval delays, their cost of project goes up anywhere between 25 to 40 percent, isn't I, that high? I wouldn't entirely agree with that. Mm. Uh, many a times, I think it is, it is just inflated. Exaggerated. But huh. certainly, it's a, it's, a, it's a huge cost. Right. And ultimately, all that is passed on to the consumers. Yes. Nobody does it himself. So the poor, helpless consumer ultimately has to bear the brunt. And therefore, if we streamline the approval procedures, which has been done not only in smaller countries like mm. in Singapore mm. or Hong Kong and elsewhere, but in many other countries around the world. And in India, I'm sure with the new government led by Mr. Modi and all the uh, various initiatives which are being taken and the president's address, as you rightly pointed out, a number of things have been mentioned. I'm sure it's going to happen. They have talked about 100 new cities, for example. They have talked about the low-cost housing project. They have talked about that in the year 2022, when India celebrates 75 housing years. Housing for everyone. Housing for everyone and so on. So explain to me, sir, that uh, something like environment and impact assessment, EIA, which is also becoming a huge bone of contention. How do you streamline that on one end and then combine it from, let's say, a state level or a local level town planning approvals? Absolutely. This is perfectly doable. First of all, you have to clearly identify which are the kind of projects where you need to undertake environmental impact assessment. For example... Do you need it for residential projects? You which do. developers have for been bigger, asking? For the bigger projects, mm. you do. But for smaller projects, for low-cost housing, for the EWS, economically weaker... Say. By the way, 95% of the shortage in is the in country... EWS. In the in the uh, this kind of a and uh, and the shortage is huge, 18 million uh, dwelling units and so on. So if we were to eliminate the need of environmental clearances for these projects, in fact they should be given a certain special dispensation, mm. maybe infrastructure status, maybe low cost um, uh, financing and stuff like that. So, uh, similarly, in many other up to a certain um, story of uh, uh, certain heights, there so should be need no it. need. Why should there Absolutely. be any need? So you're saying even streamlining the streamlining, number of approvals is important. Exactly. Stream. So in my report, I have hmm. uh, recommended six pillar uh, kind of a thing. Okay. A, there, there, there should be 
a compendium of all the approvals which are needed. So, but in, so far, not many people know. In fact, even so the town every developer must have a standard list of approvals exactly. that he needs. It exactly. cannot change from state to exactly. state. Exactly. If right. you engage a town planner, even he does not know uh, how many approvals are needed. So the form should be uh, standardized, and to the extent possible, there should be a single sort of composite application form. So compendium of all clearances needed. Secondly, there should be, to the extent possible, streamlining uh, these uh, clearances which are needed. Many of them have become absolutely Redundant. outmoded. Hmm. Just throw them out. Yes, you say that in your report very yes. strongly. Yes, just throw them out. Only those, in fact, in my other report, which is unrelated but slightly related, national competition policy, which again this committee I was chairing, I have recommended that government should undertake in all the ministries a close review of all existing uh, regulations, rules, systems, procedures to see whether the cost and time involved in compliance thereof is commensurate with the benefits to accrue mm. therefrom. Yes. And if it is not, then throw them out. I mean, what is the point? In your study, did you find, I mean, again, I'm, I'm just asking these questions because there's also this belief that because of the multiple levels of clearances required, there is a lot of graft money which flows in the system. Absolutely, it does. Everybody knows it. Mm. And, uh, people and that are, can also be done away with. Absolutely. A lot of rent-seeking will go mm. if there is a complete transparency. I like the word that you've used, rent-seeking. <laughs> absolutely. If there is transparency, I mean, at the official level or the political level and so on, the need of any seeking favours would go. And I, we, I've also suggested therein that there can be a number of other uh, reforms also. For example, there is need of uh, training, of capacity building yes. of the officials. Right now, they don't know how to That's our biggest process challenge, it. sir. Capacity building at municipal, municipal level is yeah. a huge, huge challenge. Yeah. So tell me, I mean, if it had to get implemented, where do you think the push should go? It should it go from the housing ministry at the center? Yes. Is that where they should be spearheading this? Ultimately, it is to be done in the states. But if it is done, right now the mood is there. Hmm. The mood is extremely optimistic. And you can't let this slip through. It can't let. We should encash on it. Hmm. Right now, it is like one of those Swaraj, Independence Day, when everybody wants to contribute. Everybody is so optimistic, hopeful. It's charged up. Huh, that we should do something. So why not in cash on this present mood of optimism? So developers saying that it takes up to one year to get approvals. Your report says about 196 days. Wherein lies the truth? Well, it depends again from state to state. I was also executive director of the World Bank, by the way, before I joined as chairman competition commission of India. And every year they conducted this report, the ease of doing business and mm -hmm. so on. India always used to be 130, Somewhere at the bottom. 133rd, <laughs> 132nd out of 185. In the uh, construction permits, India was at 182nd out of 185, right. by okay. the way. So, so it is tough. It is tough. It is tough. All right. Undoubtedly. Now, the one thing which I really wanted in uh, reaction from you, developers say, okay, delays happen because of approvals uh, not coming to us. The costs we could slash down by about 40% if approvals come in time. But from a consumer point of view, do you think he will get the benefit? I mean, so far, and you've been part of Competition Commission of India, recently written a very, very interesting article in Financial Express, which talks about how one-sided the buyer-seller agreement is. And how do you change something like that? Very interesting question you have asked. Uh, there is a term called contra proferentum. It's a well-established jurisprudence principle that if anybody offers in an agreement unfair terms, then in a situation like this, those terms have to be interpreted against the offerer. Now, in these kind of situations, those terms are written in such minute and unreadable kind of a form, format that as a buyer, you may not be able to notice it. And you just go see a sample flat, you like it, you sign it. So should we not be giving developers single window clearance only on the condition that this part also gets sorted out? Absolutely. The, the, no, uh, the CCI had drafted a model agreement for this right. on asking of compad. It's unfortunate that that didn't go through mm. ultimately. In this article which you have referred to, I have recommended that all these states in their terms of licenses to developers should ensure that this is mandated. Wow. If there is a fair agreement between the developer and the buyer, 
then a lot of problems ultimately I mean, they have to uh, imagine a situation that if you are uh, a flat buyer from DLF for example then you got you got a relief from CCI because but you're a dominant for all player. others they don't have any relief they have to go to consumer court mm. so for the same terms of conditions you are if you you can't get anything what is your relief so what I have suggested rather than pro having protracted litigation in the consumer court let the states take it upon themselves that in the terms of licenses of the developers these terms are built in and this would be fair to everyone and the real estate sector is such an important sector for the country I'm glad in terms of uh, contribution, contribution to GDP in terms of employment generation and in as the president's address says 100 new cities and all that it needs a big push and the other factors would be which would be needed as I said capacity building but also in terms of construction materials the cement, the steel and so on and so forth. So the list is long. Un unfortunately, sir, we'll have to wrap it out here. But it's been so interesting to get uh, you on the show and just have this entire 10 minutes dedicated to understanding what your perspective of real estate reforms is okay. in the country. We hope to see more of you on the show, Thank sir. you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. My greetings to your audience. So that's the solution single window clearance should come but here's mr dhanendra kumar saying that it cannot come without also implementing a model buyer seller agreement and states making it incumbent before they give licenses for development to have buyer seller agreements which are fair to both parties well we keep uh, we keep hoping to bring you such interesting discussions and viewpoints